Hello, my name is Chen Xianghuang. I recently finished my master's thesis at Cornell University. Together with my co-authors, Yu Chou Chiang, a PhD candidate at Delft University, and Jenny Sabin, my thesis supervisor at Cornell, I'm going to present our paper, Automating Bistable Oxidative Patterns for Polyhedral Surface. Our paper provides the geometric pattern which enables the flat mechanism to be transformed into a doubly curved polyhedral surface. The deployed surface might be used for constructing shell structures. As visualized here, the unique tiling patterns generated by the mechanism can be presented as an architectural feature. The motivation of this research comes from the architectural quality of doubly curved shells. With traditional methods, we rely on heavy force work or temporary form work to support the shell surface, thus leading to huge amount of land waste during and after the construction. On the contrary, Deployable structures are plausible solutions for cost saving and efficiency. Starting from a simple scissor mechanism, latest research includes inflatable system, neat cable system, and active bending system. They all attempt to build a relationship between mechanical properties and differential geometric features. Our approach is based on a mechanical property called oxidic. This term describes the mechanism with negative Poisson ratios, which means when stretched in one direction, the mechanism will expand in all directions. This occurs due to their particular internal structure patterns, which are what we are going to design and generate. Here are some latest research on oxidic mechanisms. Our investigation on oxidic system is inspired particularly by two earlier studies. Ralph Sanjani and Passini presented a family of bistable oxidic units that have homogeneous expansion rates. O et al identified how to design spatial transformation units based on skewing rotational axis. Combining both approach, we achieve the flat to curved bistable shape reconfiguration by skewing hinges. We introduce a fully automated algorithm to generate bistable oxidative patterns for a target polyhedral surface. To achieve the design of the mechanism, some challenges need to be overcome. The first challenge is to understand the basic relationship between geometric features and the bistable oxidative mechanism. First, let's take a look at the bistability, which is also called snap-through buckling. Chiang and his co-workers graph the energy displacement graph of a planar bistable unit. The stable states are corresponding to the local minimum of the system's energy. The bistable units can also be made into non-planar. In state 1, Two panels are connected in a hexagonal bistable unit, but the hexagon at the top is smaller than the one at the bottom. After bistable unit snaps through, the top has smaller contraction than the bottom. The difference of displacement causes the rotation. The initial hexagonal voids shall be symmetric. Here we highlight the three axes that determine the symmetric planes. On the left is the hexagonal bistable units of an edge. The adjacent panel virtually rotates around the red remote axis. The rotation angle around the axis shall be equal to the dihedral angle of the final mesh. We then reassemble the bistable units of each edge in an oxidative manner, similar to Ralph Sanjani and Passini's approach. When the discrete Gaussian curvature at one vertex is positive, all rotational axes can intersect at the point, forming a pyramid around the vertex. When the vertex has negative Gaussian curvature, the scenario is more complex. We do not discuss this in the presentation, but refer you to the paper for more details. Here we show the different parameters that influence the design configuration of a vertex. And we also run some physical simulation to test the proposed mechanism. Here we duplicate the design of a vertex to form larger mechanism. Here are some physical models. We can see the bistable mechanism generates curvature after hand actuation. Now we understand the basic geometry features, both along edges and vertices. Next, we need to address constraints to the pattern as they are in an interrelated system. We still start with edges this time. In a hexagonal unit of edge, if we focus on one side of the symmetric plane, we can see four hinge axes. They have two circles, which intersect at two points corresponding to the two stable states. The most trivial case is that all the hinges are perpendicular to the ground, and the two planar circles will intersect at two points. When axes are skewed, 
we find that the two circles lie in different planes. They will share two intersections only when the hinge pair of A and D and the pair of B and C are coplanar. We then turn our focus to the constraints around the vertex. Observing the angles around one hinge in an open and closed stage give us two equations, 1 and 2, both describing the sum of a full angle. Subtracting equation 2 from equation 1, we deduct equation 3, which describes the angle agreement between two successive voids. Having analyzed the geometry feature and constraints of bistable oxidic reconfiguration, we can start to discuss how to automate the design of patterns for a target surface. As we mentioned before, we have a remote axis which two faces rotate around. How do we locate those axes so that it can unroll our target surface into a flat plane? It turns out that we can use a neutral surface to solve this problem. The neutral surface is formed by all the remote rotation axes. All the normal vectors on its faces have half as many polar angles as their corresponding faces in a polar coordinate system. We can see the animation of this mango-like transformation as a bouncing effect indicates the bistable mechanism. Unrolling each polygon by the remote axis in the neutral surface will spread every face into a plane. You can refer to the paper for detailed algorithm for its computation. After unrolling the surface, we can design the hinge patterns. As we mentioned in the vertex transformation, each hinge around the same classic vertex shall pass through a merge point. We have computed those points as vertices in the neutral surface. All the hinge should also be limited to those bisector planes so that the unrolled pieces can be glued back together by the bistable rotations. We arbitrarily assign the position for the first hinge for now. Then recalling the vertex star constraint, here theta is the angle gap in the hexagonal void which shares the same value with the edge's rotation angle around its remote axis. We thus use the equation to calculate associate omegas, then use this to locate the adjacent hinge from the starting one. Repeating that process till the last hinge should bring the result to the exact starting position. This loop algorithm tells us that once the position of the first hinge is set in a vertex, all the hinge positions are determined. For the position of the first hinge, we need to discuss separately based on its degree of freedom. The initial input without external constraints has three degrees of freedom. We remove one DOF each time a vertex neighborhood has settled for a hinge computation. We then need to find a way to traverse all the vertices. The traversal process starts from any internal vertex. We place all the remaining vertices in a candidate set and begin to calculate the starting one's neighborhood vertices. Once hinge computation around the vertex is done, it will be removed from the candidate set. The boundary vertices are the last to traverse because they have fewer constraints and extra DOFs. After locating the hinge connectors, we can generate the patterns for the panel. We might have two kinds of pattern, one to actuate with expansion, the other to be actuated with contraction. They lead to the same curvature but in different scales. The diagram explains the relationship in these two patterns under the same neutral curvature. Their school hinge both pass the same points in the neutral surface. In the end, we can see the simulation that shows the bistable transformation between flat and curved stages. The next challenge is to materialize this system. In the generated pattern, all the panels are connected through single line hinges. We need to care about the actual material thickness during the fabrication. When we use CNC milling to make the physical prototype, we find that the radius of the drill bits lead to round corners for accurate angles of hexagons, resulting in unwanted gap between voids. Hence, we offset the edges so that the drill can create usable living hinges. And this is the final model made with 1 8 inch thick of polypropylene sheet. And this is the final photography of our model in flat and curved stage. We know funicular shells can carry gravity loads with compression stress only. Our system can take advantage of such geometry if we reach curved stage through contraction. 
at the initial stage, the panels are laid flat and detached, connected by connectors. During the reconfiguration process, the actuation forces need to pass a certain threshold, which we call a critical state. Then the mechanism will undergo snap-through buckling. Once the gaps are closed, the blocks will contact each other, forming a rather rigid structure which can serve as formwork supporting fresh poured concrete. This formwork system is deployable. The volume with gaps can be prefabricated in factory using injection mode. On the construction side, a wheel track system can provide actuation. Concrete can then be poured on top of it, leaving the Gustavino-like texture in the bottom. Here is a visualization of the ceiling of our vault. The geometric pattern preserves the chase of deployment as well as provides its unique aesthetic qualities. Finally, let's recap our work. We first identify the geometry features and the internal constraints of bistable oxidative system. Then, we use the conclusion to build an algorithm to generate patterns from a target polyhedral surface. Next, we make fabrication prototype and materialize the ideal hinges. Last but not least, we discuss the structural behavior of our system and reinsert it back to the context of architecture. There are a few jobs that we would like to solve in the future. First, our research gives primary focus to the geometry features at the start and end state. However, it's necessary to analyze and simulate the nonlinear behavior during the reconfiguration. Second, we may replace some bistable units with passive hinges to decrease the total actuation energy to make our system easier to work at a larger scale. That the vertex transformation can cover both positive and negative Gaussian curvatures. However, the neutral surface only works for surfaces with positive curvatures. We would like to expand our algorithm to more general freeform surfaces. That's it for our presentation. Thanks for watching.